just like that, Yanni Wetha to Ike Geed, Oikiva Arish Grivada, good evening to you all, and welcome to Tom and Ben News United Kingdom's Queen Elizabeth II State Funeral Special. The monarch will be laid to rest with her late husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, at the King George VI Memorial Chapel during a private service and burial this evening. It followed her state funeral at Westminster Abbey, which began earlier today at 11am United Kingdom time. The Queen had been laying in state at the nearby Westminster Hall since Wednesday, with thousands of members of the public queuing for hours to pay their respects. It was then announced that the King, the Princess Royal, the Duke of York and the Earl of Wessex mounted a 15-minute Virgil around the Queen's coffin at around 7.30pm United Kingdom time on Friday. Here's what we knew so far about the funeral itself. The line in state at Westminster Hall concluded at 6.30am with doors closing in preparation for the funeral. Shortly after 10.35am the coffin was lifted and carried in possession to the state gun carriage of the Royal Navy positioned outside the north door. The 123-year-old gun carriage then set off at 10.44am, pulled by 98 Royal Navy sailors using ropes in a tradition that dates back to the funeral of Queen Victoria, with the route to the Abbey lined by members of the Royal Navy and Royal Marines. A tri-service guard of honour then took place on Parliament Square, accompanied by the band of the Royal Marines. Following the Queen's coffin were the King, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward. Behind them were the Queen's grandsons, Peter Phillips, the Duke of Sussex and the Prince of Wales. They were followed by the Queen's son-in-law, Vice Admiral Sir Tim Lawrence, her cousin, the Duke of Gloucester and her nephew, the Earl of Snowdon. The procession, led by a mass, pipes and drums of Scottish and Irish regiments, the Brigade of Gurkhas and the Royal Air Force, and numbering 200 musicians, have arrived at 10.52 and the coffin had been carried into the Abbey for the service. The doors to Westminster Abbey will then have opened at 8am to allow the general congregation to take their seats, with a total of 2,000 people expected to gather for the funeral. Invited heads of state and overseas government representatives, including foreign royal dignitaries, then travel under collective arrangements from Royal Hospital Chelsea to the Abbey. Recipients of the Victoria Cross and George Cross Government Parliament, devolved parliaments and assemblies, the Church and Her Majesty's patronages are among those who attended, with further representatives from law, emergency services, public servants and professions, and public representatives. Toward the end of the ceremony, the last post sounded, followed by a two-minute silence. The national anthem then played, and there was a layment at the close of service at around midday. The coffin was followed out by the king, the queen consort, and members of the royal family. The funeral will unite people across the globe and resonate the people of all faiths and pay a fitting tribute to an extraordinary reign, the man in charge of the historic occasion has said. Prime Minister Liz Truss met a number of world leaders ahead of the Queen's funeral, including US President Joe Biden. The Prime Minister held informal talks with the US leader and the leaders of Canada, Poland and Ireland. In addition, she also met up with Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern on Saturday. Today's funeral was one of the biggest diplomatic events of recent years, with some 500 heads of state and foreign dignitaries attending. This will provide Miss Truss with an opportunity to meet foreign counterparts less than two weeks after taking office. Although she met Mr Biden when she was Foreign Secretary, um, the weekend's meeting with him would be Miss Truss first as the UK Prime Minister. Meanwhile, His Majesty the King has been addressing members of the Welsh Parliament, or Senedd, in both English and Welsh, on his final leg of visiting all four UK nations. It followed His Majesty and the Queen Consort, Camilla, um, attending a remembrance ceremony at Clandaff Cathedral in Cardiff alongside hundreds of other people lining across the streets. The King can speak some Welsh, though is not fluent in the language. He had Welsh lessons in Aberystwyth University before his investiture in 1969. Mae Farhidi and Sherad Cymraeg To other news now, and two London police officers were hospitalised after being stabbed in the city's busy West End on Friday, the Metropolitan Police Force said. The attack is not being treated as terrorism. 
The force said officers patrolling near Leicester Square encountered a man with a knife early Friday morning and were stabbed while trying to detain him. The officers, a man and a woman, were taken to hospital with injuries that are not life-threatening. Police Chief Mark Rowley said the female officer suffered a serious stab wound to her arm, which may be life-changing, while her colleague was stabbed in the neck and chest, but should make a full recovery. OK, to your weather now, and tonight it will be cloudier in the north with some rain pushing in from the west. The rain will be mostly confined to northwestern and central Scotland. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy with rain spreading later into western Scotland and Northern Ireland. High pressure will continue to affect Wednesday's weather, which will be dry but rather grey and cloudy. Thursday is expected to be rather unsettled with a band of rain pushing in from the west into Scotland and Northern Ireland. Further south in England and Wales, it should remain dry, and that is the weather. OK, that's all today. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. God save the King and Queen. Please subscribe, and we shall see you next Monday. As per usual, you can check us out on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Tom and Ben News for UK. The link is in the description. Use the Facebook app and click the like and follow buttons.